Gen Z just might save the world. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Kids are taking over university campuses around the world for the noblest possible reason anyone could do such a thing in 2024. There are so many reasons to feel pessimistic, but Gen Z's fierce opposition to the Gaza genocide is a massive reason to have hope for the future. I talk all the time here about the need for a collective awakening and revolution in order to turn this disaster of a civilization around, but it could turn out that what ends up saving humankind is as mundane as a superior generation of humans emerging out of the information age and replacing inferior generations who've been far more indoctrinated by mass media propaganda. Northern University brought in the police to break up a pro-Palestine demonstration, claiming anti-Semitic slurs and hate speech were being used by the demonstrators. But witnesses say it was actually pro-Israel counter-demonstrators who'd been shouting the anti-Semitic slogans, and a video confirms this. The pro-Israel agitators got some 100 demonstrators arrested by standing near them and shouting, Kill the Jews, but they themselves were not arrested. Whoever got this on video is a goddamn hero. Now nobody can deny that this has been happening. I keep seeing people expressing bafflement at the way Biden keeps alienating his base by shamelessly perpetuating the human butchery in Gaza. Doesn't he care about getting reelected, they ask? No, Biden does not care whether he gets reelected, and neither do his empire manager handlers. What matters to them is advancing imperial interests in the Middle East, not winning some pretend political puppet show that only exists to entertain and divert the common riffraff. They will happily lose the election and hand the genocidal baton off to Trump and his empire manager handlers, who support all the same agendas as Biden's. Biden loses literally nothing of material relevance by being a one-term president, so there'd be no reason for him to step back from all the agreements he's made with the inner workings of the empire to get him where he's at now, even if he wanted to. One of the weirdest things happening right now is how empire managers and propagandists are claiming these campus protests are being fueled by foreign influence from evil autocracies, even as the Israeli prime minister openly influences state governments to crack down on those protests. If you've been shocked by the lies and propaganda your government and your media have been churning out about Gaza, it would probably be a good idea to take another look at what they've been telling you about Ukraine, too. And Russia, China, Iran, Syria, North Korea, Cuba, Venezuela, and Yemen while you're at it. The New York Times has a new Pentagon press release disguised as news reporting titled, A New Pacific Arsenal to Counter China, subtitled, With Missiles, Submarines, and Alliances, the Biden administration has built a presence in the region to rein in Beijing's expansionist goals. It's exactly what it sounds like. It describes the U.S. empire's military encirclement of China, but frames it as a defensive action to counter Beijing's expansionist goals, rather than the extreme act of aggression and military expansionism that it actually is. If China started surrounding the U.S. with war machinery like this, it would be World War III instantaneously. One of the dumbest things the imperial media ask us to believe is that the U.S. empire is surrounding its number one geopolitical rival with war machinery for defensive purposes, in response to expansionist goals by that rival who has zero war machinery anywhere near the United States. So many of the awesome anti-imperialists I follow and admire got their start years ago supporting Palestinian rights. Israel-Palestine is like a gateway drug for anti-imperialism and anti-war activism for a lot of Westerners, because the issue is so mainstream adjacent due to the West's intimacy with the Israeli state. The Gaza genocide is going to give rise to a real anti-war movement in the West if the empire managers can't find a way to stomp it out. Which is why they're trying so hard to do exactly that. But their attempts thus far have been pathetic failures, and have only made things worse for them.